Hello, I'm Caroline Wiseman, and I'm very pleased to speak today to Regina Bosch. Regina was one of our artists. Hello, Regina! Regina <laughs> is in Ireland. You are in County Kerry, are you not? Because I know, because yeah. I came to see you just before lockdown. Yeah. We just got back literally the day before lockdown, and we had a little band of a band of artists here from all but ten of us, didn't we? We came to the to Kilwillig, the artist residency. And we had the most amazing time. And we came to your studio where you are now. Yes. So I know. Uh, you. So in a minute, we'd love you to show us around your studio to show mm -hmm. us what you're doing in a live in lockdown. Yes. So we've known you, Regina. We've known you yeah. here at, in Albra from the Albra Beach Lookout and Art House now for probably about, I don't know. I think I had my first residence in uh, 2013. Right, okay, so that is seven years we've known you. Yeah. We've had yeah. About three residences now, which I think it's more, more than any other artist. We know you because when you come here, you go out on the windiest, most freezing day, and you're there on the beach doing your en plein air, your landscapes, which are beautiful, and they're, they're just they're very lovely works of art. But well, I always find that opera brings out the best in me. Yeah. Probably with, there aren't so many features. There's just the shingles, the water, and the sky. Yeah. So it lends itself to reducing, yeah. uh, you know, rather than detailing. Yeah. So you can get a sort of, a, sort of abstract yeah. Yeah. Re reduction of landscape, which is just the atmosphere of the colour. But then you were surprised us, don't you? Because then you uh, made a work in the tower. Tell us about, you did the extraordinary piece you did in the tower. Yes, I did. I did, a, on the top room, I had a piece where I covered the entire room in paper, which I had um, painted with ultraviolet uh, reactive um, and paint. And then I was drawing on it what you could see if there was no four walls, if I was just on a platform and I was looking to all four directions, so it was sort of bird's eye view down. And then we had the ultraviolet lights on and it gave it an extra dimension. Yeah, and so, then we projected you, didn't we, onto the tower? And we had all yeah. the people, didn't we? For some reason, it was a really, really busy night in Auburn. And there were like thousands of people walking past and there you were projected. I think there the was a firework. <laughs> yeah, there were fireworks and it looked as if they were all come out to see my piece. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. you know, we wanted you to come to Venice to be one of our 28 artists, and you were. And again, you surprised us. We didn't know. We, the, the thing about Alive in the Universe, we gave our artists a completely open brief. We said, David and I, um, we curated it together, and we, we chose the artists, and we gave those artists a totally open brief we said you can come and do what you want so long as you're expressing something to do with being alive in the universe you can do what you want we gave you the space of this huge palazzo with the with the you know this lovely cavernous space and uh, you you did something which you completely surprised us tell us what you did and why you did it well, I did an awful lot. Um, I had um, three films which ran on the opposite wall to my installation pieces. Here's one of them. We can look at that. If I can turn my camera. Go. So this is one of the pieces which was in Venice. It's a woven piece, um, woven on bookbinders linen with uh, refuse uh, plastic and uh, Vengzu um, calligraphy paper. And so on the opposite, there were two more pieces, sort of like a little stage. And on the opposite wall, um, I had a screen with three films. Mm -hmm. And then I performed an, a, um, well, a performance, which was based on yeah. just a thing uh, different cultures basically and the you know the the narrowing of our perception by categorizing and saying this is mine and this is yours and my culture your culture so I danced uh, different dances from different cultures to to songs and music mm -hmm. that I actually sang myself 
from different cultures, but they didn't co they didn't sort of uh, coincide. So I would dance an African dance to to Bach's uh, Christmas Oratorium and so, and the like. So it was just sort of a mixing up of cultures. Um, yeah, it's sort of a little bit shaking up. The other up. side of you, of you that we didn't really know that this side of it existed, it was very exciting when we filmed the whole thing. So on our website, we can all see you dancing in your amazing costume, which you made as well. That was, that was something. That was pretty special. Yeah, well, the costume again, there was a lot of... Basically, everything I did had a symbolism for, for me. It didn't mean that everybody had to know about it, but uh, the, the intent and the content has to be something I really think might be beneficial to express. So it's, it's, if I express it, it could be just through the energy of making it, through the energy of showing, performing. It doesn't mean that anybody has to see it, sort of understand it intellectually. But the costume also had... Um, sort of the significance for instance that it was uh, see-through plastic with blinking lights on it and the lights were part of a well a buddhist sort of auspicious prayer um, and the plastic being see-through and me naked underneath well, that's right to do with a couple of people noticed that that you were naked yeah <laughs> so that was sort of the, the symbolism is pure from the beginning before mm -hmm. we put all our concepts on before we make all the stories there's a purity and so that's the pure from the beginning. That's why I was naked and I had a sacred heart painted on my chest. That was symbolism for just love. So everything I did, everything had a connection to, to, to some cultural concept, spiritual mm -hmm. concept or experience. It didn't mm -hmm. have to be a concept, could, could be an experience as well. So we are looking, we are in your studio here. Tell us a bit yes. about your studio because it's not any old studio, is it? It's got a special history. Well, it's a house which was built in 1860 for my partner's great-grandfather who opened a hardware store in here, which became a very successful business. So I have all three stories um, kind of cluttered full of artwork, but up here, under the roof we, we put on a new roof and it's a big space and a very bright space and um as for the the two lower stories are darker obviously being much older and you kept I mean, them exactly as they were haven't you because we yes. went around it just to say in march we came and you the, the kitchen is exactly the same the the shop where they're selling their hardware is exactly as it was all the bedrooms are exactly as they were with the um and on the walls you know you've got the crucifixion you know the pictures of the, the virgin mary and jesus as would would have been in the bedrooms well this is what i keep i keep the middle floor as a prop i have sort of slightly changed it because uh, you know, you couldn't sleep in it otherwise, you know, there's new mattresses <laughs> and new bed, linen and bedding, so on and so on. But uh, because sometimes, um, you know, uh, people stay here as well with me, friends or relatives. Um, but I keep it as it was because it's sort of great prop because I often do interior paintings as well. And, um, it, it, you know, it's just fantastic to have that on my doorstep, you know, it's basically. What was social history? Yeah, the way that Lewis lived going back in when was it you know 1850? Yeah, 1860. 1860. Yeah. I suppose the history itself, maybe you know, I'm not a very nostalgic person. I think what I'm more interested in is the 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 transiency of, of, of life basically. How many people have lived here, sat on those chairs, eaten at that table, they're dead and gone, their bones are in the graveyard, and the next lot come and they use the same thing. So I, I, I'm interested in that absence of people and the flow of people. And obviously at some yeah, stage... Of in the most western part of Southern Ireland in, in, in County Kerry. And yeah. It, yeah, it's really very beautiful. You're right by the sea there and it's, it's a whole fascinating way of life. Can we see a little bit more around your studio? Because you've, you've been doing your lockdown work. So since we saw you, you've been locked in your, locked in. So sh show us what you've been. What you've yeah, we're very strict here. We, we can only move within a two kilometer radius. Now it's five. 
So I have Whoa, before most um, not here. Yeah, before lockdown, I, I, I was able to go to the different beaches, which I visit regularly just to sort of do uh, just work. And then after lockdown, <laughs> all I could do is smaller work on paper. And I climbed on the mountain behind our house, which is still within the two kilometer radius and painted down from there. Oh, yeah, there's some... I did escape once. Here's Balin's Kellex Beach, <laughs> close to the, to the Kilrelic residency. So yeah. I did escape once, but in general, I just painted from above. So I did a series of little ones. Mm -hmm. But then I have been spending a lot of time on this very large piece, oh. well, reasonably large, <laughs> two meter 40 by two meter and four. And it's again like the Venice pieces, so there's that continuation from Venice. I'm interested in doing large work, but easily to transport, not weighing a lot, easily to install, because yeah. I don't think it's very environmentally healthy to have a complicated, heavy shipping procedure. So it's stitched on this netting, which I have to stitch together myself. And then I'm using beautifully made. All your works are beautifully conceived and made with your beautiful netting, and um, they're always very beautiful. Yeah, I do think that you have to, you know, I, I, mean, I try to use as much as just uh, material which is around, not the the, the, the the calligraphy paper, obviously, but like I use a lot of um, re sort of just found objects like. The plastic here in the weave, which is just household, you know, mm. whatever you get in the supermarket and can't avoid. <laughs> and, and so, um, but I think you have to make up for it then by very, being very meticulous. You know, they really have to be stitched together, you know, very meticulously. Otherwise, it's just a mess. So to get this piece in very thin paper to be really exactly so the flat is not quite easy. And uh, even that this piece is going to be nearly totally covered with white um, sort of uh, calligraphy paper with drawings on it, I still spend weeks sort of with thousands of little strokes making it green. So I believe in the process, <laughs> you could say. The process is as important where um, do you think Regina you might energy. exhibit it? Yeah, it has its own energy. So well, then, where do you think Regina, you might exhibit it? I'm not, I haven't thought about exhibiting simply because we're in lockdown and <laughs> I just really enjoyed that feeling of not having any pressure mm. and not having to do the business side and just pretending that I'm just doing this out for the universe. <laughs> and yes. when it's done and when the lockdown is finished, I'll start. So thinking of exhibitions again. Yeah. So here it's sort of a, it's because it's under the roof. I have sort of I don't have a lot of straight walls, but I can still pin things up. I did a show in Cambridge mm -hmm. uh, on the grounds of Kettle's Yard. So that was mm -hmm. the technical drawings for that. And then the, it gets messier as we go around mm -hmm. the studio. I I uh, keep my studio warm in the winter with turf and timber which mm -hmm. makes an awful old mess there's a lot of ashes around and <laughs> then I have a big big work table here let me see mm -hmm. big work table and more mess all sorts of materials and then I also have storage rooms this is where I store store my materials mm -hmm. and also my my a lot of my finished work, the larger work, it lives here on this four poster bed. Here's another piece from Venice. Yeah. And there's probably the pieces from from what I did in the lookout as well. Large mm -hmm. rolls of all sorts of things. And then I have a second storage room. Here's the suitcase that everything fitted in. Actually, I had two, two of them, two suitcases which brought everything to Venice that I needed. So I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Of course, I 
my work gets bigger and bigger. So I have to say that there's never a point when I feel I have enough space. <laughs> Fabulous, Regina. Regina, can you put the camera back so we can see you again? And we must say goodbye yes. to you now. So we want to say goodbye to you now. There we are, Regina. So thank you for showing us around your studio. Sorry? To see the artist actually in, in operation. It's just been great. Lovely to talk to you. Yeah. So, um, we'll say goodbye now. I just have to say again that the Venice was an amazing, amazing opportunity. And I, yes, I did, I did, a, I did a lot of work for it. I did those three films. I said that I had to sort of um, learn the choreography of, I think, nine just different dances. I had to sew my costume. I did the, those big pieces. I did props. I did so much, but I just thought, I mean, <laughs> how often does one get invited to show in Venice? So I, I honoured that by just think, pushing the boat out and just thinking, I, I do everything. Yeah. Do you think your work has changed in any way? Did it have any impact on your, do you say, what you're doing? Or... Well, yes, I think in the way that, that my work has become bigger. That's for sure. I think because Venice was such it was such a big venue as well, and what I had sort of planned really needed large, large work. So since then, I, you know, my work is just getting larger and larger. Yeah, that's more <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, that that was, and also the thing that that you you know you you really inspired people just to push the boat out, um, you know, go beyond your limits and. Uh, think big in not just size wise but in general in ideas that's a huge help that really is a huge help because in on the other side in the more commercial you know gallery world or whatever there, there are there, there are clients and they look for a certain thing and in, in, even if you don't feel that you are adjusting to that in reality you do you really do. Regina, I think yeah. we're going to be cut off in a minute. It's, it's saying something. Yeah, just a minute. Bye now, Regina. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. I just and plug it in. Oh, okay. something's happened to the screen. Oh, there we are. We're still there. Okay. Regina, we're going to say goodbye now. So, lovely seeing you. Thank you for taking us into your studio and thank you for telling us all about Alive in the Universe and Alive in what you're doing now, Alive in Lockdown. Lovely talking to you. And say goodbye now. Bye, bye. Regina. And bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>